Hey, can we have a roll call, please? Jim Batson. Here. Kara Benjamin. Here. Don Carmichael. Here. Tara uh, Drubke. Here. Lisa Hessel. Here. Sonal Kulkarni. Here. Casey Rooney. Here. Great. We note that everybody, uh, all board members are present. Um, tonight on our agenda, we will start with uh, an invitation for public comment. Then we will have the president's report, including our new student school board representative reports, which we are looking forward to. We'll have a superintendent's report, uh, including a lot of wonderful and very important information. We have our consent vote agenda. Consent vote means that we discussed all of those things uh, two weeks ago in committee. So we will vote on those as a group. Following that, we will have our FNF committee. Um, sorry, P P and P. Sorry, first P and P, then FNF. Uh, we'll have updates on ISB, seat all, discuss any future agenda items, and then we will be going into executive uh, session to discuss collective negotiating matters. Five ILCS at one twenty two C two and a uh, probable litigation matter, 5 ILCS 122 C11. After that, we will return to open session, but take no further action other than adjournment. So uh, with that, I will ask, um, do we have any public comment? No. We have no emailed public comment? We do not. And we have, it does not look like we have anybody in person. So uh, we will move right on to the president's report. So tonight, it is my great pleasure to introduce our 2021-2022 student board representatives. Joining us from Libertyville High School, we have Faith Davidson. Wave. Sean Graham. Ryan McCrory. And from Vernon Hills High School, Sophia Gonzalez Bernier. Tiffany Kang who will she's at a golf meet she'll be here soon fabulous good hope she's hitting them long and straight <laughs> and kevin schumacher so you'll note that the very first thing that we do before we discuss the business of the board is hear from our student board reps that's for two reasons number one when you're finished if you have work or homework or a test to study for we would love for you to stay for the whole meeting, but it's not necessary at that point if you need to leave. But even more importantly, we start with this because the students are why we are all here. It's why our teachers and our leaders get up every morning, passionate and inspired. It's why every single one of our board members ran for office because it is all about the students. And hearing from you really is important to us. It informs our decisions and we make better decisions when we hear what's going on in your schools from your perspective so i want to thank you in advance for the school year long commitment that you have made to keeping us informed because your work here really does matter and it really does have an effect on our decisions um, you know it was a selective process and we take it very seriously. And um, that doesn't mean we can't also have some fun. So on September 13th, we'll have our first luncheon where the superintendent and I will join you along with members of the district leadership team and any other members of the board that care to join us. Mm -hmm. um, so we will uh, have a chance to get to know you as well. So uh, with that in mind, I'm going to turn it over for our very first student school board representative report. Well, I'd just like to start by saying, uh, the beginning of the school year was truly a whirlwind at Libertyville High School. Um, it started back in the beginning of summer, though. We were challenged by staff, you know, because students have been out of school for so long to kind of this, this important message of restoration and renewal to, you know, build upon traditions and create our own. And uh, so it all the first two weeks before school is where it all started. We had many tours for the freshmen and new students and turnout was fantastic. And I heard glowing reviews for every student from every student they were very impressed with all the people that helped out 
Um, then we turned, uh, we had our freshman orientation the Friday before school started. That's run through our link group. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so our, our freshman orientation was the Friday before, and it's run through our link crew program, which is run by our juniors and seniors are selected to uh, have groups of freshmen and to kind of help them hold their hand through high school for the first half of the year. Uh, just hearing from some students, some freshmen there, the energy was great. They learned a lot. And overall, the, our staff leader that helped with Link Crew said it, it was one of the best overall. Uh, then over the summer, again, we talked about all this planning. We uh, had this idea for a senior barbecue to kind of you know, recreate some anticipation for the school year. And uh, the turnout there was fantastic. It was all about, you know, letting seniors know what our message is this year and trying to build upon that. Uh, then, so the, the, at the start of the school year, we, seniors talked over we wanna start a new tradition and we decided to line the entrance to Libertyville High School to welcome all the new students coming in kind of make it feel more easy process and uh i talked to some parents after and they were, they were shocked they they thought it was such a great thing and you know it just made it easier for the kids to come to high school because you know it can be such a big scary thing uh after that we start our day with an assembly kind of get that wildcat spirit going it was great you know the under underclassmen were a little shy at first how they normally would be but uh Dr. K encouraged them, all, all the people that spoke encouraged them. And I think by the end, they really kind of understood what being a Wildcat's all about and the culture that we have. And the first day, uh, first Friday, we had a Green Dot Action event, which is, uh, for you guys don't know, Green Dot at Louisville High School, it's kind of our culture. It's all about stopping like interpersonal violence and the freshmen were introduced to it. And we had a green out and again, <laughs> with everything, participation was great, everybody, was dressed in green and signing up to do the training. So um, overall, just a great start to the school year. I'll pass it to Faith. Hi, I'm Faith. <laughs> so after not being in school with the regular eight period schedule for 16 months, Libertyville High School has undergone a lot of changes throughout all grade levels. Some students participated in the hybrid schedule last year um, due to COVID, while others like myself, we did remote all year. So I haven't been in school for, feels like forever. So I've heard from most of the LHS students that besides being a little tired from readjusting to the normal school day, they're happy and excited to be back in school again. And trust that District 20, 128 staff are doing everything in their power to make sure LHS and Vernon Hills are following safe COVID precautions. They're providing resources for students to ease back into the school year with great compassion. With students finally being back after so long, school spirit and energy is through the roof. Football games are one of the highlights at LHS in the fall and at a time to, and a time to create fun memories and generate school spirit for all of our classes. Times with their class and all their friends again at such a great setting is so important for our students for so many different ways. I have heard good feedback from students so far regarding how the year is starting and how their teachers and classes are moving along. As a link crew leader myself, freshmen especially, have told me they've been enjoying being new students at LHS and have a great transition from middle school to high school. One of the many changes that have been happening with Libertyville is the new update on lunch periods. To incorporate another COVID precaution, Libertyville staff have spilt, sorry, I'm just tripping over my words. Libertyville staff have split lunch periods uh, between classes. Freshmen eat in the cafeteria when they do not have link crew on their study hall, on their scheduled days, while sophomores eat the first half of lunch and then they go to the auditorium and the juniors will swap with them after the second half of lunch. Seniors are allowed to choose which half they want to eat and if they would like to eat at another spot in the school. This year, we will have an open campus for all lunch periods to open to all classes to keep the school less packed and more open for safer COVID, COVID conditions. LHS has also put in a new courtyard for students to go outside and gain a little more space and air during lunch. In conclusion, LHS is having a safe and fun start back to school. Excellent. 
Okay. Um, over the past few weeks, uh, fall sports tryouts have been occurring and many teams have started their seasons. The boys and girls golf teams have already played matches and the football team held their scrimmage last Friday. It was really great seeing, you know, football, cheer palms in the band, all at the scrimmage and all the students there that kind of want to welcome spirit um, back to us. Boys soccer, girls volleyball and girls tennis all had their first games today. With many sports last year being without spectators, super, students are super excited to support our teams. Auditions and casting were last week for the fall musical Matilda, and rehearsals begin today as well. Tomorrow from 7 to 9 p.m., LHS is hosting an open house for parents to meet their children's teachers and learn about their classes. Uh, for freshman parents, as well as all the sophomore parents, a lot of them haven't been in the school yet, so it's a really nice chance to kind of understand our culture and our spirit. There's also an activity fair being held in the Libertyville gym this Wednesday during all the lunch periods. Students will be able to talk to representatives of different clubs, arts, and sports, and sign up for any that interests them. The freshmen and sophomores haven't had a real opportunity to be fully introduced into LHS activities, so this is trying to help them into all the activities that we have to offer. Um, many link crew leaders are taking their link crew groups um, to that activity fair so that all the freshmen really get a chance to find something that interests them and get involved in the school. Also this Wednesday, the senior class is meeting at 7.45 a.m. in the main gym to take a class photo as well as to receive college and career information. Thursday, we have a pep rally in Cook Park from 7 to 7.45 p.m. to promote LHS athletics to the community. Cheer, Palms, and the Marching Wildcats are performing and anyone is welcome to come and support the school and community. Um, this is another event to try to foster and show school spirit um, for the Carmel game on Friday. So Friday is our first football game. It's a home game against Carmel. Um, students are encouraged to wear all orange and meet at Brainerd at 6 p.m. to march down to the stadium together as a whole class. Everyone is super excited because this is the first football game back as a whole school and football games kind of represent like all of our spirit and just sort of getting back into um, the school year. Hi, okay. Hi, I'm Sophia and I'm, we're starting VHHS. So basically I think it's obvious as the year starts, many things have changed. For example, masks are now required indoors during the whole school day. Most students have been great about keeping masks on and over their noses, but I've ended up seeing, and a lot of other students have ended up seeing some that have needed that constant reminder from teachers to, you know, not wear a chin diaper and to keep it over their nose. As of now, most of the senior class is vaccinated at VHHS and the other classes are not far behind in that category. Students have generally reported fe feeling safe from the Delta variant, especially with the mask mandate, but most hope it doesn't last the whole year. Additionally, coming back from Zoom has been an interesting experience to say the least. Personally, I miss being able to climb out of bed just in time to log on the first period, but I can agree that I'm much more active in my in-person classes. It also feels nice to talk to people and have them respond instead of having to stay muted in awkward breakout rooms. Students love the eight period schedule being reinstated since it doesn't feel like classes drag on that much and the day speeds by. On Thursday, August 5th, the VHHS freshman orientation was hosted, welcoming the whole new class into the school for the first time. Over 80 returning students stepped up to become orientation leaders each having their own group of about 10 to tour around the school and play some icebreaker games with. Masks were required to attend, but only while we were indoors. My group really enjoyed the tour part of the process the most because of the new facilities and how everything seems so much better than being in their rooms all day on Zoom. After getting to know the school, we went outside for a fun presentation in the stadium. This was new from other orientations and it was honestly really nice to take off our masks and see each other's faces and see the freshman class sitting together for the first time. Dr. G had some fun activities planned where freshmen got a chance to eat worms, solve a very complicated math problem, and even chuck footballs at their own principal. In the end, the event was fun to unite the incoming class and it helped everyone get the feeling of, physical, of physically going back to school. This summer, a lot of seniors started working on their college applications. Mrs. Bolito from the VHHS College Resource Center has been hosting workshops for the Common App, transcript needs, and even personal essays. As a first-generation college applicant, these workshops have been my saving grace over the summer, and Mrs. Bolito has helped me make sure to not procrastinate on my applications. With many deadlines approaching, seniors are currently working on writing their personal essays. A couple of students per period use the CRC as a resource to get some work done, 
and it has been a nice space to bounce ideas off of each other and learn some tips. When asked what the most stressful part of senior year was, many senior seniors, including myself, said college application deadlines, but the CRC is working really hard to make sure we all have the opportunity to pursue whatever we want. And also lastly, congratulations to Mrs. Molloy and her art students for completing another successful memory project campaign. They're passionate about breaking barriers and uniting youth from different cultures as part of our district's daring mission. This spring during remote and hybrid learning, BHHS art students in drawing and painting studio courses put their passion and artistic skills into rendering portraits digitally and traditionally from home and on campus. 26 portraits of children of all ages were completed by the students who were creating for orphans living with host mothers across India. Their children were, the children were so excited to receive these VHHS students artwork and they fully understood that creating the portraits was a way of extending kindness and care during these uncertain times. And I'm passing it on to Kevin. Hello everyone. Um, all right. Uh, we've had some successful sports since graduation. So congratulations to Hunter Matuch as he finished second place in both shot put and discus in the 2021 IHSA state finals. Our boys volleyball team had an outstanding season. Um, they were the third boys volleyball team to ever make it down to state, uh, but their season was uh, ended short with a devastating loss against Glenbrook North in three sets. Uh, their final overall record was 33 and two. Um, great job, boys. Uh, the two losses were against the same team. Um, <laughs> uh, Jenna Cody, Naya Hines, and sisters Nicole Spitek and Kylie Spitek broke the four by 100 relay record um, for our school at state this year with a time of 49, 49.18 seconds. Did you guys know that we had an Olympian in the VHHS community? Uh, 2018 graduate Nicole Sladkov competed in the rhythmic gymnastics team uh, for USA in Tokyo. Uh, she, um, sorry, uh, she, she made uh, USA, her family and her community very proud. Uh, and in 2021-2022 news, uh, our golf team Tavi, uh, our golf team is doing very, very strong. Uh, the girls saw a second place finish uh, in a six team LHS invite. Um, the team scored the lowest total round for VHHS in school history. The, bo uh, the boys team led, led by Dylan Josephson won an early season tournament in Glenbrook North. On August 11th, the incoming seniors had an event planned, planned out by the school called the Senior Sunrise. Uh, seniors gathered uh, on our football field to play games such as spike ball, bags, football, and soccer. Seniors also were able to eat pizza and talk with each other uh, while watching the sunset go down. Uh, over 50% of our seniors attended this event, and it was a great way to kick off a senior class. Um, with the class of 2022 being the uh, biggest senior class of Vernon Hills ever, um, the senior parking, uh, parking lot is at its full capacity every single day, um, with some cars even not, not being able to uh, fit in the parking lot. Um, uh, this is a new issue for the seniors because, um, once again, we are the largest class. And um, this is also causing uh, people to leave earlier for school so then they can reserve a spot. And so people who are usually coming in right before the bell, now they're having issues because they had to park in the junior lot, which is pretty far away. Um, yeah, and also when we are leaving the school, um, that is also an issue because we haven't really done that before, um, is, uh, <laughs> I, I left the building at, uh, 350, uh, 3.35 one day and I got out at four. And so it was, uh, pretty, pretty interesting trying to get through that on the first day of school, but hopefully throughout the school year, we can, the senior class can figure it out and push through. Um, this year for Vernon Hills, uh, we decided to make all grade levels an, op uh, an open campus lunch. Um, this means that anyone from any grade can leave the school during the lunch period and come back for the next period. Um, the seniors are a little disappointed in this because we've waited our turn, but we understand <laughs> because of, uh, of COVID rules. Um, also, with the expansion of our uh, cafeteria, um, uh, usually in the normal year, it'd be perfect for uh, all lunch periods to um, have enough space, but because of the tables, we're only allowed to have four or five to a table. And so capacity in the cafeteria is filling up very quickly. Um, and 
Also, usually in the past years, we've had half periods for um, lunches. So you'd go to study hall or in the library, and then you would eat lunch for another half. But this year, because of our expansion of our uh, cafeteria, we were able to make it a full period lunch. Um, this upcoming, upcoming Saturday kicks off the start of Vern, uh, Vernon Hills Dances. The kickoff dance is a way for freshmen and, uh, and others to, who have not been to a Vernon Hills dance to see what they're like. Normally in a non COVID year, we would have it in the main gym. And, um, but this year it will be on the football field. Uh, there will also be a stage for everything. Uh, during the kickoff dance, there will be performances by six senior lip sync groups, which I believe is one of the biggest turnouts we've ever had, which is amazing coming off of this COVID year. Um, um, so there will be a dance and then there'll be a lip, uh, lip sync. Uh, the seniors are also talking to the underclassmen uh, I've been hearing in the halls and they're trying to encourage the underclassmen to go to this event because senior, uh, junior, uh, sorry, uh, sophomores and freshmen have never really experienced anything like this. So seniors are really pushing it for the underclassmen to attend these events and participate. And now I pass it off to Taffy. Tiffany, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Okay, so to start off, um, even with the circumstances of COVID this past summer, our FBLA team was fortunate enough to have nationals. And even though the students get, didn't get the fun experience of getting to travel out of state and explore a new city, they still overachieved through Zoom. We had over stu 40 students of our, 40 of our students qualify. And out of those, we had four teams and one individual placed in the top 10 out of over thousands of students from across the nation. Anurud Adiraju, Joel Kim, and Brandon Newman placed seventh in the international business, making them the highest placing Vernon Hills team this year. Also, congratulations to Jeffrey Brahms, Jonah Hansen, Shrikar Manikanda, Daniel Zhang, Raul Gupta, Andrew Chikinov, Krish Asher, Caleb Kim, and David Munn for also placing in the top 10. And to kick off the school year, the staff has organized Fun Fridays to get all the students excited to be back in school. For our first Fun Friday, we had a cool activity to do in each class period that allowed all the students to get to know each other and connect. For example, in PE, we had to build the tallest balloon tower with our groups, and in math, we had to roll a dice, which would determine which get to know you question we had to answer for the class. And during our lunch periods outside of the school, it was filled with games, popsicles, and a dunk take for a shot at dunking our favorite teachers. This past Friday, we had our first VH give of the year. We focused on reconnecting and rebuilding relationships at our school. We built connections by sharing facts about ourselves and seeing who else in the classroom we had them in common with. And as we shared and connected these facts, we built physical connections as well. Once we found something in common, we linked paper strips together so that we could represent a physical chain that represented a whole class being connected. And also, Dr. Gilliam has started off the year by meeting with each grade to go over his goals, like reconnecting the school. At our senior meeting specifically, Dr. G and Mr. Bellacomo emphasized the importance of teamwork and between us and them, and how it was our job as seniors to lead the school. The senior class can't wait for the rest of the year and to get all the underclassmen involved. The new STEM labs, which were inspired by Northwestern Research Labs, have created a new opportunity for Vernon Hills students. A variety of classes use these labs, including AP Environmental Science and a new course, STEM Capstone. I've personally already done a lab in the new classroom, and it definitely made me feel like I was a professional scientist. It brings much more of an advanced and professional vibe to the classroom compared to doing labs in the regular desk classroom setting. Because of this, many students are so excited to take advantage of this a new addition. Thank you to the Board of Education for supporting this important addition to Vernon Hills High School. And finally, did you know that estimates show that Lake County has five to 10 years of landfill space and that also methane emissions from rotting food waste in landfills has as much as eight times the impact of carbon emissions due to burning fossil fuels. VH2O, the Vernon Hills Environmental Club has begun to implement procedures to create zero waste during lunch periods. The club has teamed up with NHS to students to have a presence during all lunch hours to help facilitate the process. Students now are separating waste into liquids, food waste, recyclable materials, and garbage. Special thanks to Mr. Greenwald for all of his efforts to help reduce Vernon Hills High School's environmental footprint. And that's it for our report. Very nice. Great job, guys. You started off on a great foot and um, we look forward to your participation in our further meetings. So anybody who needs to leave right now, you're welcome to. You are also very welcome to stay and leave at any point throughout the meeting. You will not be disruptive. So thanks again. Um, and that concludes the president's report. Turn it over to Dr. Herman for the superintendent's report.
<clears throat> Thank you very much. And students, that was an excellent summary of so many successful things that have started the school year. Thank you so much for sharing. I get to build on that with the first agenda item of good news. And we have some staff good news to share. Um, Deed 128 staff members will be recognized ne next month at the Illinois chapter of the National School Public Relations Association, or INSPRA, 2021 Communications Contest Award Ceremony and Luncheon. VHHS Fine Arts Department Supervisor Andrew Russell and Musical Director Kevin Phelan will receive honors for the video, We Wrote and Filmed Our Own Musical, a behind-the-scenes look at making the Institute that was selected as a winner in the video with an outside contractor category. Communications Director Mary Todorik will receive honors for D128 Daring, the podcast, in the podcast audio category. The award ceremony will be held in, uh, in Oak Brook on September 10th. So congratulations, nice, Mary. And can I ask if we would like to find the podcast, can we go to the D128.org website to find it? Yes, you can. And I encourage everybody <laughs> to check it out. Great work. Wonderful. Um, so next up, I wanted to share with the board a summary of some of the things we did to launch the strategic planning process with the leadership team, and then get some feedback from you about ways that you can all be involved and help inform the process. Um, so I went ahead and put a few slides together just to give you a few of the artifacts. Um, we had several people from the district leadership team um, we had some union representation. Uh, President Hessel was with us. Again, just trying to make sure this first orientation to see, will this fit the needs that we have? And do we think it's the right process for us going forward? All right, so next slide. Thank you. So one of the things that um, the facilitator <laughs> reminded us of is uh, schools are perfectly designed to get the results they're getting right now. Mm -hmm. And if we want to have different results, we have to measure some things to know what we need to adjust and then do those adjustments. I mean, that really is what we're all about. We know we're doing many, many, many things very well. But the few things that we could use tweaking on, we want to engage in a process to help us set those priorities. Next slide. And again, um, the process that we're embarking on is all centered around the mission and vision. Any action we do, any things we're implementing, or how we're assessing, how we're doing, all of those things should be focused around the mission and vision. And um, here we're defining the vision as the desired or intended outcomes or our future state. Um, next slide. One of the things that differentiates this process a little bit, you can go ahead and go to the next slide is it connects the vision, not only to you know, what we want for students, but the vision of what would be, need to be happening in our curriculum, instruction, assessment, and the environment to reach that vision. So it, it more closely connects the vision to the practices of schooling. Next slide. And again, we know we have our wonderful daring mission that decides the fundamental purpose of our organization. That's another thing that will continue to be at the center of the strategic planning work. Next slide. This is way too uh, tiny for you to see, but it is a multi-step process. And I wanted to let you know that each of those small chunks is an inquiry question because all of this is about asking questions and using data and, and things from uh, input from people to help us make these decisions. So the first uh, few slides are uh, top ones. You can go to the next slide. I actually made it bigger. So this first part is where we'll be starting actually August 31st. So we'll be getting a group of staff who volunteered plus both building leadership teams to really answer the question, where are we now? We'll be diving into different kinds of data. So our demographic data, We'll be looking at perception data. We'll be looking at programs and processes. How are things actually done? Um, and then finally, um, looking at, I can't see that from here. Oh, can you read the last one for me? Uh, what are processes? processes, thank you, yes. <laughs> what are the processes um, that, the, the how we do things. Next slide. We'll also do a little bit of problem solving. Um, because one of the things that when you look at the data, you see a little bit of, hmm, I wonder what's going on there. So we'll do a little diagnostics as well. Next slide. That will then def 
help us inform any adjustments we might need to make to our vision, or like I said, defining it more clearly according to the assessments, the um, curriculum and instruction and environment. Um, we don't anticipate any major adjustments to our daring mission. Again, that was recently done and is very grounded in our community. This is more, much more so to embed the mission in much more work. So it's, it's that kind of informed process. And then finally, we will transition from there to the action plans. How will we then make decisions to uh, dedicate our resources towards things that will help us achieve that, that mission and vision? Um, so we see the timing of this being really good as we're going into budget building cycle for next year and making some decisions. This will perfectly align with us um, putting those action plans in place. Next slide. And then finally, making sure that we also build into the process, how are we going to know if the things that we are considering doing are working? And that will be, again, that's the continuous improvement part of it. What kinds of things are we going to be reporting to you annually or quarterly? Or what's the kind of thing that's going to give the board and the community and the staff information on how well we're uh, implementing our uh, improvement efforts and how well we're reaching our mission? And then the next slide. And again, um, I like this graphic because it shows even some schools that are doing random acts of improvement. So a lot of people doing a lot of really hard work, but it's not really moving the organization forward. What we envision this process being, next slide, is an opportunity for us to make sure all of our improvement efforts really are focused on our mission and vision and that any decisions that were made are informed by getting us closer to that. And finally, the last slide. There we go. And um, this is an overview of the process and those things are color coded. So you see the green meetings would be the uh, strategic planning committee meeting the main staff. And you see those first three meetings are where staff is gonna come together and do that heavy lifting of analyzing the data and making sense of it and saying, where, what are some of our gaps? What are some of the processes? What are we doing really, really well where people look to us as an exemplar? And what are some things that we need to look to outside? At what are some other exemplars? Um, we will then bring all of that information back to a more community-wide uh, strategic planning team. So the staff will do the detail work and the uh, data analysis, and then we'll bring it um, to that yellow category there in early December. And that's where we will bring the uh, data analyzed and make recommendations on the highest areas of need, goals, and any kind of adjustments we might want to be making to the mission and vision. Here's where I see two opportunities for board members to be very engaged in the process. Um, I, when I've uh, done this work in other school districts, the board has done one or both of these. One of them is at the evening strategic planning session that's held as a board meeting. So all seven board members can be participants with the strategic planning team and you know, go through the processes that everyone will be in. The second is then, so you have an outcome of some priorities and things like that. The second would be to have then a study session or to use time at the uh, December um, committee meetings to give the board some time then to reflect on that and to come to more consensus um, on what are the priorities because second semester would then shift focus to working on the action plans. What adjustments do we need to make to our professional learning, to any of the things that we're gonna be doing moving forward um, so that we can have time to uh, bring back to you then in April, uh, not only the, the aligned goals that we've prioritized, but action plans then, um, and that would be brought back to you in uh, probably April. Those, those timelines are firm but flexible <laughs> in terms of um, maybe needing to adjust them. So I wanted to get some feedback from the board and your calendar and your comfort level um, if you wanted, and we don't have to decide tonight, but this is a information sharing, um, how you would want to see the board involved in both that prioritizing of goals and interacting with uh, parents and students and staff members, 
and then having the opportunity to focus even further. And then that same process in February and March. Um, again, I think it's important. We talked about the board having one of your jobs to setting the direction for the district, but I also know you want it to be shared with the staff and with the community. So I, I think this proposal represents um, the best of both worlds. So I'd like to answer any questions that you might have about the process. I'll just jump in. I, I think it's a great plan. I think it's a great process. There's sufficient time to do this. I, th I also think it does a few things. One is it, it provides sort of this pathway for towards, you know, reflection and measuring mm -hmm. our successes. I love the random acts of success. Was yeah. that, was it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and allows us to focus those. But then one of the things that we as a board had mm -hmm. mentioned mm -hmm. not long ago was the, the interest in really being able to see some, mm -hmm. some um, measurement of how we're doing and some mm -hmm. reflection over a longer period of time of uh, our successes and, and where we're headed. So I think this does a lot of that, plus really puts focus on all those great things that we've been doing and really does, I think, mm -hmm. will do ju justice to the daring mission and, and really moving that forward to the next level. So great work. I was going to say, um, I like the framework and the process uh, very much. Um, we do similar things even in corporate setting where you set goals, you measure, you know, continuous improvement. I like the fact that we have the ability of getting input from the community um, in addition to the board and other staff members. So that's great. Uh, so I, I did pick up on the random acts of improvement yeah. you can all be working hard but this way it aligns everybody towards a set of goals common goals so good job for stakeholders we can have moving towards the same path or solidified uh, our growth will be and mary and i are working on a couple different ways um, to think about getting more as many parents in, in involved in the process as, as possible, not only those who have maybe the time to attend that evening, but through you know um, a, a perception survey, as well as some other technology tools that allow parents to have brief conversations and iterations online. Um, so we will be bringing back sort of a plan how we're going to get as many voices heard in the process as possible. Same thing with students. So there will be some students on the strategic planning committee, well, there'll be a student survey, but we'll also have some opportunities for students to do almost an online message board to help us rank priorities for things. Will you be giving us updates as we go along? Like we're not gonna just all of a sudden, December 13th, that's the first we hear about, we'll, we'll know what's happening. Absolutely, yes, I will include updates in my monthly report and, if it, and also even in between sessions. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, you said on the 13th, but that, that day is both committee meetings and the general mm -hmm. meeting. Is there time to do that? I would work with the board to decide if we wanted to have it on that meeting or if we wanted to dedicate maybe a separate study session of 90 minutes or something for that. Again, I was trying to anchor things to existing meetings, but right. I don't want it to rush. So we can- Yeah, it might, I think you've got a good point there, Don. It might be better to separate that out so that we give it the focus that it deserves because there's a lot of work that's going to go into this. Um, so that might be- I'm inclined to go that way. Okay, yeah. I will, I'll touch base with you guys on a possible separate- I know it's session. hard to think like putting must something else on people's calendar. I know, especially at that I time. Because the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the 13th is two committee meetings and a board meeting. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's already quite a factor. Right. Well, that's right. a lot. Yep. Lisa and I will work on an additional date right. around that yeah, time. I think that's good. Perfect. Sounds good. Right. I also like the idea of having the students involved. And I can tell yes. you, having gone through this process not long ago during at my, my day gig, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, that the students' voices were probably as powerful yes. as anything we did. You mm -hmm. know, it really gave gave some some perspective that the rest of us didn't always think about. So mm -hmm. that's a that's a very powerful thing to have the students involved. Have you thought about reaching out to former students to see what they feel <coughs> has contributed to their successes? You know, I think the I, I think the idea of a 
of a graduate survey, we have the uh, perception survey that we're going to be working with that's even more focused than the five essentials. So that'll be one of the things that we talk about on August 31st is what are some of the key components that we get the basics of from the five essentials, but really isn't enough to help us maybe make some decisions based on that data. So we could definitely make, modify a version to send it to um, our graduates. It can be hard sometimes when we don't have a good database because sometimes then we get a skewed sampling of, of graduates, but I still think it can be helpful to hear their voices. And to, just to validate some of the metrics we're using for, mm -hmm. for measurement of success, and whether they really feel that those have applied in their real world practices of, as they've left our schools. So just a thought. Well, thank you. It's a good idea. All right, well, if you think of any other uh, questions or feedback or ideas, please send them my way. Um, and then the next thing we have is our capital projects update. Thank you, Dr. Herman. Um, over at uh, Liberty Hill High School, our field house is, uh, progress is moving along. Our HVAC is up and running in the gymnastics gym, uh, driver's ed in the weight room area, so those can be used. Um, the west wall, uh, our emergency wall that we had to rebuild, that's totally completed, and our metal panels on that west wall will be completed by the end of the week. Uh, windows are due in in about a month, but those are just slip in place. They're already flashed, ready to go. You set them and and that that wall will be totally done. Uh, painters pres presently prepping inside the area uh, to paint whatever we can on the ceiling wise and, and things like that. Our floor, uh, the existing floor is scheduled for removal uh, starting next Tuesday. Um, once that's out, they'll, they'll dig it out to gravel. Uh, we're going to put a lot of the electric underground. Um, the electric that's up on the ceiling, that's all completed. They're pulling wires and prepping everything for future hookups. So uh, that progress with the elect uh, electrical work is moving along great. Um, we're uh, working on confirming with all our suppliers our delivery dates because as we know, the roof is, is behind on materials. Um, uh, we wanna make sure we make our goal for our, our you know, a partial occupancy for uh, the start of winter sports in October. At the end of October, so that's what we're working towards. And our plan is at the September committee to take a tour of the field house. So everyone, please close toed shoes to walk through that space. It'll be hard hats and stuff like that. So just be ready. Uh, and then um, just on the financial end, I, for the Vernon Hills Additions um, project, just to let you know, I did write it in my memo, but I need to make sure that you all see it for sure. Is I, we got a number of change orders uh, very recently that are that total over $100,000, not any, any individual one, um, but that's kind of a lot to get at the very end of a project, um, which is something I was hoping to avoid, but that didn't happen. Uh, one of them uh, for sure is one that is too high for either uh, Dr. Herman or myself or anybody on our staff to be able to sign because it's over $50,000. And so our contract that was board approved, I get not that by this board, but by previous board, um, if it's over 50,000, the board has to approve that. So we'll bring that to you in September. Um, there, there's actually, there's, uh, there actually, I don't have it attached in this one because it's not signed. Um, but the, so I'll give you detail about that. It's not any one specific thing. What it is, is it's an accumulation of change orders over the life of the project that they all smushed together and gave to me as one change order. So I have to treat it as that, even though it's not like one big thing. Um, so, but I'll share that information with you. And so um, two things, one, we're not done yet um, with this project. So as I told you, like we're still finalizing numbers. There's other numbers that we're under on. Obviously, we know we're over on what we estimated our contingency to be. Um, but so far, the total cost for this project, I still, um, a month ago, I said, I still feel like that's a solid number. Now I would tell you I feel less comfortable. Um, but I don't think we're talking about a huge variance either way. I don't, I, it's, you know, it, I think at most five figures either way um, on this, but we have several months to go. So I'll keep you informed about everything. But I think that's, Really, all the change orders I think we're anticipating to get uh, at this point. Um, I think Gilbane has turned over everything, uh, to my knowledge. So, 
uh, yeah, want to let you know about that. And I want to thank you for the, the detailed change order log. Um, I think it's very valuable to have that kind of information to see, you know, anytime you do construction, there are a lot of unforeseen reasons that, that things get changed or added to a project. Anyone who's ever done work on their house knows that. Um, you dig into the ground, you open a wall, you sometimes don't know what you're going to find. So it's important to take that into consideration as far as, you know, the, the awesome job you've done in managing the money with these projects. So thank you for giving us that detail. Okay, great. Um, I have FOIA um, uh, updates. I'll share four of them briefly, um, but I also need to add five for COVID update. I yes. apologize. No I, uh, I um, didn't add that and I told you all I would share that and that's going to be at every meeting. So first I'm going to share, we received four FOIA requests, uh, one commercial one from Zoe Yelson. It was received on 7-6 and we responded on 7-26. We had one for student information from Michelle Youngerman from WBBM asking for grades for students. It was received on 8-10 and we responded on 8-16. We had one student information from request from Scott Petty asking for AP exam scores from LHS that was received on 816 and we responded on 820. And finally, we had a second request from Scott Petty for AP exams for Vernon Hills High School and that was received on 819 and we responded on 820. Those are all of our requests. So now we will go to our COVID update and um, we are going to have a graphic and I did, we updated this this morning with the numbers. I wanna thank Bryant and the athletic directors and everyone else who's been working to um, keep this so you have a hard copy. This will also be posted on our website uh, following the meeting tonight. Um, so we wanted to make sure we came back to the template that we talked about um, with the four different kinds of data that we'll continue to be updating us on. Um, first being community transition, transmission, excuse me. And you'll see that the numbers are fairly stable um, in terms of the percentages. Um, uh, slight increase in most of the categories. Um, we did have a decrease um, in the case numbers in Vernon Hills, but an increase in Libertyville. Um, and you'll see again, even more uh, spread across the county. Um, in terms of vaccination rates, we do have more data to show and celebrate. Um, Lake County did increase up to 55%. Our staff is at 86.1%. Um, and our students, um, uh, as of uh, the 20th, Vernon Hills was at 71.3, and Libertyville was at 70.8, so very, very similar in terms of the student and Actually, I, a couple updates. Libertyville, this afternoon, they're up to 75% now. Oh, so. thank you for that flash, yeah. news flash. Yeah. Um, so we do continue to get updated information from the nurses. Mm -hmm. um, we have not started the shield testing process, so that's why there's an X in that category. Um, but we did start, as the board requested, the by next testing for students who are unvaccinated for indoor sports. Um, that took place last Thursday at both schools. Um, approximately 60 students, approximately 30-ish at each student. It was each almost 75 okay. total. And Thank then you. it's the, the four indoor sports, girls swimming and diving, cheerleading, uh, dance, and the girls volleyball. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. And uh, then we have not had any major clusters to report. So that's very good news. It'll be weekly until SHIELD starts. Um, do you have the start date again, Brian? So SHIELD is scheduled. Um, we are scheduled the week after Labor Day, so the week of the 13th. Um, and so they would come in um, two days. So they come in Tuesday and Friday at uh, both schools um, and split up our testing that day. So that would again be open to, that would be our unvaccinated students in all fall athletics, uh, our staff that's unvaccinated, and then um, also any staff that are voluntary, you know, they want to test during that time. Um, and so to get everyone through, um, having two days a week um, is helpful. It's also helpful having that extra test day if we have to do any test to stay strategy, having um, that test on site. So, but SHIELD, I think everybody in Illinois was hoping to have that testing starting sooner. Um, and I think we're even pushing to get it started that week, but 
as of right now, knock on wood with Passport, we are starting that week. Mm -hmm. And is Passport prepared to continue if Shield is delayed? Correct. So if for some reason we don't start Shield, we're not just going to stop. Um, and, you know, I, I'm hopefully we'll have costs on you for this past week, how much that was. And if Shield gets delayed more, we can always talk about what else do we want to do in the interim um, so that we're not delayed too much on getting mm -hmm. our other athletes in place. So we can look at that. Mm -hmm. So we're paying for right now, we're paying for by next now testing. So we're paying for staffing plus the test. Mm -hmm. They're not in very long because it's pretty quick between the two buildings. Mm -hmm. If we looked at more of a cost, when Shield comes, it's completely paid for by the state of Illinois in turn taxpayers, mm -hmm. but not, you know, not us directly to them. Mm -hmm. And we're paying, we, the shield covers all the tests for shield. Um, and then Illinois is also covering passport to come in and man it. So they're paying for that third party. Um, so we're not paying anyone during that piece of it. Right. Um, I do think it's important that we discuss um, the board. Um, if we have consensus to continue Obviously, we don't have numbers as to what it will cost at our expense up until the time Shield can be fully implemented. Um, and I don't want to make the assumption that we're all on the same page, but I do believe that whatever that expense is, it's worth it. But I don't want to assume. So if any of us want to um, express concern about incurring the expense until Shield can be implemented, um, by all means, um, Please, I'm happy to hear. I have no concern with that. I fully support continuing having Passport and the Binax tests available so that we can keep folks safe and keep students in their programs, in the school and learning. Okay, great. Same. Yeah, I don't have any concern I, either. I would, I would only say that it, it doesn't seem to be that it would reach the threshold where we would legally have to vote on a, no. on a contract or anything. So. I think we're, you know, from my perspective, you're good to go just to continue on unless we reach that threshold, which it doesn't sound like we will. Right. And just, uh, you know, also testing our nurses are also using by next now. So we applied for a clear waiver last year and we got free by next now testing from the county. Those tests are to be used for symptomatic students and staff. And so just they are testing, you know, they're submitting tests, you know, every day. Um, some are doing the test to stay. So some of those tests are being used for tests to stay right now and then for other situations. So just, you know, we are using Binex now with our nurses. That's not something you're supposed to be using though for surveillance testing. Understood, so, which is why I thought it was important just to be sure mm -hmm. that I didn't assume we had consensus, uh, but it sounds like um, the board is fully in support of whatever expense um, we need to incur to, uh, to continue that testing before shield is up and running and i i reached out to um madison our contact and passport to get some details on cost and so she's working on that for me so, so. Okay. just a reminder the pricing that we at least had before was twenty dollars a test plus fifty dollars per hour per the team that's they're working so that's how our cost structure was before assuming it's similar so for now we can probably estimate pretty easily based on the approximately 75 students that we're testing. So mm -hmm. um, seems like an expense that we can comfortably continue without any, um, as Jim said, mm -hmm. any vote. And um, you do have our support to, mm -hmm. to continue that. Thank you. I also want to thank both building principals for the hard work that their teams have been doing to <laughs> remind students to be wearing their masks, um, being at both sites in the last week. The students have been very compliant and, and very supportive, um, as have the teachers. And I mean, in terms of everyone really feeling positive about being back together and that if they have to wear a mask for that to be possible, then everyone's really being very positive about it. So thank you to the principals, the assistant principals, the nurses. I know it's already been a lot of work to start with that uh, case tracking and monitoring. And that is the end of the superintendent's report. Great, thank you, Dr. Herman. Moving on to the consent vote agenda, you will note we have several items, including uh, approving minutes, employment of employees, um, some coaching appointments, some disposal of obsolete equipment, the bills payable and financial reports, all of which were either uh, 
reviewed in committee or prior to that. Um, so if I could please have a motion to approve the consent vote agenda. So moved. Second. Thank you. Vote call, please. Sorry, before we do that, any discussion on the consent vote? Seeing none, roll call, please. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Hessel. Aye. Kolkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Great. Motion passes. I will turn it over to Jim for the PMP committee report. Thank you very much. Uh, a couple items here on the program and personnel committee agenda. The first is board policies. We have a group of board policies here for a second reading and adoption. And just as a, a reminder and, and a note to the public that these were reviewed multiple times. They were reviewed for a first reading at the last board meeting, as well as uh, committee meetings in both August and July. So these have been uh, thoroughly reviewed. Um, so if we can have a motion uh, to adopt these. There, there's a quick question though, before we go, if that's okay, or should we go ahead and move we make the motion? And should we motion? Once we have a motion, then we can discuss, we can discuss before good. we yep. vote. Move to approve the um, policies as presented. Second. Great. Okay. Discussion, please. Okay, here's the discussion part. Uh, I asked Brian today if there was a way that we could just make it policy, not policy, uh, if we could make it uh, a part of our operating, standard operating procedure. Anywhere there's a mention in any of our policies that refers to another document that's either inside our house or outside, like a legal reference, those are hyperlinks. Um, all of the things that are legal references or um, cross citations, those are already hyperlinks, but there's a bunch that's language of ours. Um, and I would like to just see that those are embedded so that anybody that's going through our policy, when it refers to the student handbook, you can click on the word student handbook and it takes you to our student handbook. And Bryant uh, very graciously said, yes, that's something that we can do. Um, so as these come up over time, and we adopt those policies, we would like to just make that something that happens every time. And, and so for example, in uh, the current one, 2240, under policy adoption and um, dissemination, we did, uh, you know, Carol and I work on, um, you know, what we get from press policy and press doesn't refer to everything on our end and our websites. All of the links that they provide might be to, you know, other policies or the legal references, cross references. But if we want to refer to something on our own, we have to do that on our own, which we can do. And so in policy 2240, we did refer to the district website to find the, um, the board policies. We can be even more specific um, and report them right to what is our board policy online.com. And it goes right to that. Rather than refer somebody to the main page, we can put the hyperlink to go right to that page. If you guys are okay with that, yeah. then people don't have to yeah. keep searching. So we did have d128.org on there. I'll change that and make that more specific right to our D128 board policy online. Um, and then the other one was in 6235 which refers to um, acceptable use acceptable use policy. And it talks about the um, acceptable use policy. And so to somebody, they might say, well, what is the, you know, the acceptable use policy? Where can I find it? We can make a hyperlink right to our technology um, acceptable use policy, which is a website. So if we ever change it or update it, it'll like we don't have to it's change the board yeah. policy yeah. or anything like that so it, it under on page one is six two three five it's referred to technical uh, technology acceptable use policy and, and it's italicized and we can make the link to our website where that is and i can do that and so you know we'll work going forward on changing those because press again they don't go to our websites and try to find our personal stuff they'll just generalize something yeah, I, and, and it's a great idea. And I think it's something, you know, it really doesn't change the content of the, mm -hmm. the policy. So we don't have to vote on it. We don't, mm -hmm. it's just a, 
a navigation in how you access the board Correct. policy. So it's really, I, I think it's something that we just do as, as practice in the future and it just helps everyone navigate the, the material that much quicker. I point. can work on that. And if we see any that we come forward in the future and you see i missed it please tell you, help me out you know if I, you know if you say hey that, uh, where's the hyperlink to that one more you know the more information that we can get people with the board policies is is the better so yeah that's great and if i could just add a very nitpicky thing <laughs> is when you do a url just open in a new page and not in the same page because you can get really lost with good that good point okay we can <laughs> go we try to to, and try to i don't know that. about our board policy online if that allows us to do that i'll look into it so we use this we use press policy service and then they kind of how is that for us so i don't know if it'll open yeah. in a new page but we can try yeah. It's quite it's possible. Yeah, yeah, many of them do. So anything else? Okay, roll call, please. Benjamin? Aye. Carmichael? Aye. Drumkey? Aye. Bessel? Aye. Kolkarni? Aye. Rooney? Aye. Batson? Aye. Okay, motion passes. Uh, the B item on our agenda here is update to all board policies to include gender neutral inclusive pronouns. Uh, similar concept, but this actually changes the wording in the, uh, the the board policy. So I don't know, Brian, if you want to just give a 30 second overview of what we're doing here. Sure, this is uh, what we talked about, I think, at the last board meeting, maybe a committee meeting was to update um, our board policies to the gender neutral exclusive um, pronouns and in talking to our um, our board attorney, he says that we do not have to um, go through all of our board policies and bring them individually to the board and have you approve those changes that you can direct the administration um, to make those changes. Um, and I think, um, you know, both Carol and I can go through and start that process. It might be a, a couple months to go through and we'll just pick a section and go through it um, section at a time and work our way through it. So we would start with section one um just so people know we're going to do it chronologically so i don't want somebody saying hey you you know paid you know section seven hasn't been done yet but you know um, we're not going to prioritize we're just going to go um kind of chronologically so you can make a motion to direct us to change them and we don't have to bring every single board policy to you so just a random question does mm -hmm. that require then a revision date at the bottom do we have to do that um i'll have to find out from press on how they do that yeah, revision yeah. date it, it just came to mind it's yeah like, hmm, i wonder if we have to do that so i think we put it in for yeah time, so I don't... yeah i'll check on that yeah, though yeah just curious okay so um can we have a motion please i'd like to move to direct the district administration to remove the masculine and feminine gender pronouns and change to gender neutral inclusive pronouns in all District 128 board policies. Second. Nicely said. <laughs> any uh, comments, questions from any board members? Okay, hearing none, roll call, please. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Essel. Aye. Kolkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Okay, motion passes. And then lastly on the uh, program of personnel is the employment of employees. Uh, and as we start the school year, we have a number of uh, positions, a lot of coaching positions and whatnot that we had to fill. So uh, these were all reviewed in uh, committee. Um, no, and, these are these oh, are these are new ones. I'm sorry, the ones committee, reviewed yeah. in committee were in the consent. I always, mm -hmm. I always goof that up. Sorry. <laughs> no so these are all, all uh, uh, additional ones uh, since our committee meeting um, two weeks ago. So, uh, but we have to get these folks in here. So, um, can we have a motion? to approve these. Move to approve the employment of employees as listed. Second. Any comments, questions? Yeah, kudos to Adam Lucan, my former student who is continuing <laughs> his coaching in swimming. So <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, he's, he has big shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a good yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's so cool. Uh, any other comments, question? Roll call, please. Drumkey. Aye. Essel. Aye. Kolkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. 
Carmichael. Aye. Okay, motion passes. That concludes the uh, program of personnel. Great. Thank you. I'm going to turn it over to Casey for the Facilities and Finance Committee update. Hi. Just one little thing on this agenda <laughs> adoption of our fiscal year 2022 budget. And we have discussed this since what, May? <laughs> April? Um, Here? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it depends on who you ask. I feel like I've been discussing it for yes. a long time. Really, the, um, point, the point is we have been reviewing this many times in many ways. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> so yeah, so I've got just a couple slides. We can throw those up um, just to walk you through. Um, sure. All right. Um, so this is our final budget is ready. <laughs> to go. Uh, if you keep delaying this, I'm just going to keep tweaking it. Um, <laughs> fiscal year 22, so the recap. So just a reminder, we've had, this is going to be our fourth uh, public meeting on it back in June. We had a special meeting on just the budget alone. Um, so that was a, a fun time for me at least. Um, July, we had our budget hearing. Um, then last a uh, couple of weeks ago at our FNF committee, uh, we reviewed that as well and then uh, ready for a final adoption tonight. So uh, we've had several public meetings uh, addressing this, uh, and then the budgets have been available online for public review. So just a few final numbers. Um, when you look at all of our money in and all of our money out, uh, we've got 94.7 million revenues, 101.2 million expenditures, for a deficit total of essentially 6.5 million. Now, the reason for that is because of the capital projects we've got. We've got 6 million for the field house that we're paying out of fund balance. We're not borrowing money to pay for this. We're paying this out of essentially the cash we have in the bank. And then the, you know, the remainder that we have of the, the $30 million project, which is just a, a couple hundred thousand left. Um, so that is true. That is all the money and all the money out. But I don't want, I, I don't want the perception that, oh man, we're, we've got a $6.5 million deficit. Oh my. Uh, that's why we look at the operating funds. So the operating funds are really the day-to-day -day running of this place. So operating funds are at... Revenues of 94.7 and expenditures of 94.4. Um, so those are 4.8 increase on the revenue side uh, from last year's budget and a 5% increase on the expenditure side from last year's budget, all really in line with our quote unquote return to normal um, that we were under, you know, fiscal year 21 was an extremely weird year. We're hoping for fiscal year 22 to be more normal. And so this is part of that. Um, we talked at the budget meeting about how it's kind of difficult to compare because we've not really had a we've not really had a full normal quote unquote fiscal year since fiscal year 19. Um, and fiscal year 20 budget was also a comparable because we budgeted for a normal year then as well. Little did we know. So we're sitting right now at an operating surplus of three hundred twenty eight thousand uh, dollars, three hundred twenty eight thousand nine hundred dollars. And I think I think that's accurate. I think. Uh, I think those are good numbers. So uh, what the next steps are really is we're looking for adoption of the budget tonight. Um, so that would be a roll call vote for, by all of you to uh, approve that budget. And then we have cover sheets for the budget that every single board member has to sign. So this is not something where it's just Lisa and Don, it, it, every single person has to sign. So there's several copies of that. So I will make sure when the meeting is over that all of you do sign that because that's something that we turn into both the county um, and for auditing purposes. Then beyond the budget is our tax levy. We'll, we'll start entering into our tax levy season, which uh, the tax levy, the assumptions about that levy are in our budget. And so just because you approve the budget doesn't authorize us to get the money. And so we will start that process. That usually is November or October and November for final adoption in November. And so I will, I will try to build in time to explain that process to you, especially for those that have not really been through this process and those who have, as hopefully a helpful reminder of how this works, because essentially what this process is, is to secure the majority of our resources to do all the all the wonderful things uh, that we all want to do. So that will be coming in October and November. Um, so stay tuned for that. That's really the information that I have. There's detailed reports with a lot more information uh, that you can review. And obviously, if you have any of Happy to answer any questions. And if you have questions later, like, hey, I know we said this, but I don't really understand. I'm happy to talk through anything, so. All of that information is available to the public as well. Yep. 
Um, really just very high level, that surplus number that you had up there, what are some things that could positively or negatively affect the assumptions um, that drive that number? Um, the, so if you wanna go back one slide, Francis, I think. Or, I'm thinking oh, just for more for folks that might be listening and might be interested, like that's, there are well, some things out there that affect that. Yeah, so I mean, the, the budget, I, I mean, right now, technically nothing will change the budget unless we adopt a different budget or amend the budget. But in terms of what will actually happen, uh, there's a, a variety of things because, you know, as we go through the year, I'll be telling you basically how this is wrong, all the different ways this is right, all the different ways that this is wrong. And I, I will keep you informed of that every step of the way. Uh, so the things that could really affect this from the revenue side could be timing of property taxes. That's always a tricky thing. Um, but we should, hopefully we are beyond that. Um, interest income rates, if they change, if they go down a whole lot more, which is hard to believe that is possible, but it is possible. Um, depending on what happens with the state, because the state has been pretty flush with cash. And so that if that phases out, that could affect timing of our state monies. Um, I think the federal government is doing pretty good on money. So I don't anticipate that being an issue. On the expenditure side, it's really just to see um, how our expenditures shake out. I don't anticipate being more. We've never really ever been in a situation that we've had more than that. It's usually the less, and the question is where less. So with the Delta variant increasing, we probably will see less travel than you know we had thought. Wishfully thinking back in March and April and May when we were kind of really trying to put numbers to this and every everyone felt really great and everything was moving in a really positive direction. Um, so that I think, I think the biggest thing will, the biggest unknown I think will again be the impact that COVID is having on our year, which likely will end up being we spend less in areas. I mean, there might be areas that we spend more, but I, my guess is overall it would be a less impact to the district. Perfect. Thank you. Just, just a little view of some of the things that go into designing this budget and some assumptions that have to be made. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you and your team for all the work that goes into this months and months. So thank yeah, you. Not just the team, everyone here has mm -hmm. been part of that. So um, any questions, discussion? I have one question and thank you for answering all my endless questions. <laughs> <laughs> just on your surplus deficit. So let's say things go really well and we have a greater surplus where does that money end up at the end of the year and reverse question is if we have to exceed the 328 where does the money come to fund that yeah so um if so what i would tell you is two things one um if any 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 surplus at the end of the year goes into the fund balance so essentially think of your own I try to translate it for personal. So say at the end of the month, you don't spend all the money that you brought in that month, it stays in your account. That's essentially what fund balance is for. So it would stay there. What do you do with that? Right now, we don't have a designated plan for what to do with those. We've been using them for capital projects and things like that. And I would anticipate that's probably what we would use it for in the future. But as of right now, those are those are technically undesignated. Um, your, brother, your authorization is really for us to spend no more then can you go back one more bill i can't spend more than 101 million dollars so i don't have legal authority to do that so if 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 things change and i had to spend more you have we have to amend the budget um we've been very fortunate to not be in that situation um but now if we go up one more bulbs but if you but if we're talking we realize numbers are going to be changing a man you know what say this revenue source, like what happened in the last two weeks is realizing I have a revenue source went down for us. If I realize another revenue source is going to go down, essentially what happens is um, we don't really change anything. We just kind of watch that. So, because at the end of the year, some revenues will be higher than we thought, some lower, some expenditures might be a little bit higher. Most of the time they're lower um, than, we, than we anticipate. So the, the, the sense is I'll keep, you, I'll keep you posted. And my guess is, by the end of the year, we won't be 328. It probably will end up being more because that's usually what happens as much as we try to accurately anticipate how much we're gonna spend. That's not always the case. But if I start seeing us trending in a way that that we are veering off of that path, I will absolutely keep you informed. And if you know something something extreme happens, then I would I would keep you informed and also talk about you know ways that we can avoid that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great question. Anyone else? Hearing no further comment, can I get a motion to adopt the fiscal year 2022 budget as presented? 
So moved. Second. Roll call, please, Carol. Hessel. Aye. Cole Carney. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. That concludes Facilities and Finance Committee. Thank you, Casey. Mm -hmm. uh, number six, ISB. Uh, Kara, do we have any update for the Illinois Association of, no, sorry, Jim. Cedal, sorry. Yep. Let's go to six, ISB, <laughs> for Jim. Jim, do we have any update for IASB, please? Uh, I'll just, uh, a couple <laughs> quick reminders. November, they're still planning on doing the uh, uh, joint conference. So if you're uh, so inclined to attend, it's a great conference, and especially for the newer board members, there's some great sessions on the first day. Uh, to to help you get acclimated to that. And you meet a lot of great board members from so many districts. So that's great. Um, October 13th is our okay. Lakes Division meeting. So that's a dinner meeting that uh, they do one uh, in the first half of the year and one in the second half of the year. So that's, that's coming up on the 13th. Uh, and then sometime in the next couple months, we'll be, uh, um, I'll be asking you to review the, um, the, the, um, Delegate assembly um, documents uh, for the, the all the um, what are they called resolutions the, the resolutions thank you uh, that the uh, delegate assembly will adopt uh, or not adopt as the case may be so I may be asking you for some of that feedback prior to the November of a conference so that's it that's great can I ask just by a show of hands who's going to the um, conference. Okay, so we will, the whole governance team will be in attendance, which is yep. a wonderful news. Thank you everybody for your committing your time to do that. I think it will be well spent. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Okay, so now, CEDAW, Kara, do you have any updates? Yeah, real quick. Um, so not much to report, but uh, students, CEDAW students began uh, at campuses and schools uh, last, this past Thursday. Um, so they were, I guess compared to our students delayed slightly, but you know, we do have district students who attend CEDAW schools. So those are students too. Um, and then we have an upcoming meeting uh, this Wednesday, the governing board, um, and we will be voting to approve the fiscal year 22 final budget. And we will also be voting to approve the proposed extended bargaining agreement for the 21-22 school year between the CEDAW teachers union and the CEDAW governing board. So Did you say that's a contract extension? Yeah, yeah, that's what it that's what it sounded like based on the agenda, but I'll learn more this Wednesday. I'll have more to report when I come back. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, uh, any future agenda items that we'd like to note tonight? Uh, no, but I would like to go back and share one more good news. Yes. <laughs> These lovely plants yeah. that you all received. Um, if you were at my opening address, you saw that every staff member received one of those um, for their opening day gift. And they were part of a micro business that a group of our uh, students, uh, our special education students, who typically we try to have do some community work. That's not very possible right now with the COVID restrictions. So they opened their own business and they did their mission statement and um, they did all of the planning and assembled all of these plants for 400 plus staff members. So great. Uh, very proud of their work and they wanted all of you to have one as well. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for noting that. Um, that's a really really cool thing for us to take home uh, as an accomplishment for, for those students starting their business and supporting the Daring Mission. And by the way, that was an incredible opening. Um, thank the, you very much. The opening of the school year was spectacular. The energy was great. Uh, you could see the staff smiling under their masks. Um, Dr. Herman delivered a, an incredible opening speech. Um, she really knocked it out of the park and gave everybody a, like a common sense uh, of where we're going. So kudos to you. And uh, I was, it was great to be a part of it. Thank you very much. And I, I felt a very strong connection with the staff and I thank everyone on DLT for helping me get ready for that. Um, it was a really positive way to start the school year. So I was even, probably almost as excited as the students were <laughs> to be back in school. Yes. Well, and it showed, and I think it carried over because everything I'm hearing about the students first full week has been nothing but positive. Mm -hmm. um, we have had so many wonderful comments um, and appreciation 
And um, we want to recognize both of our building leaders, Dr. Tom Colentis and Dr. John Gilliam, for their leadership in getting both buildings off to just an incredible start of a really special year. So thank you. And if I could add, I'm a freshman parent and we had a, at LHS, it was an awesome experience driving and my daughter was all feeling embarrassed. But <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, look at all these kids, but it was very well done. It, very good energy there. So good job there. These are the moments where we do learn some new things from COVID. Mm -hmm. That was, uh, I, I can't tell you how many people commented on the entry into LHS and really to bring, I mean, I, I don't, I asked, you know, if Vernon Hills had done it as well, so I don't know how that organically came about, but that was a really good school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think each school has, you know, the same kind of goals but the kids and the staff sort of find their own ways to express those. Sometimes we do things very similar and other times it's just a little different because, um, you know, the kids get different ideas they get ex excited about. That, that one came, as John mentioned, largely from our seniors. We challenged them, like, how do you want to start this year uh, so much? And I think you've kind of done that with your seniors as well. So much of the, the, just the energy in the school, the vibe of the school is set by the seniors. And so at LHS, that was something they came up with. We invite you all as well to the uh, pep rally in the park. That's our, we're gonna have our first ever kind of community pep rally on Thursday night, as the kids talked about. And um, the idea is to kind of show the community we're back, give them ways to support our students and also support our local businesses by bringing our kids and parents to our downtown area. What time does that begin? Uh, seven o'clock it. and it's a quick one seven to seven forty five mm -hmm. so on thursday i get to start my day at cook park with the farmer's market <laughs> and i get to end the day with That's the right. lhs pep rally be. <laughs> sounds like a great day we just have to hope that it does not rain yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay um so if i could get a motion we are going to um Retire to executive session uh, for the purpose of discussing collective negotiating matters and probable litigation. So moved. Second. Okay. We are going to adjourn. We're going to take a roll call. Sorry. Yes, we're going to roll call. Do you also have to mention those? <laughs> I did you at the top did of the agenda. Okay. Do you think I should? I could do I it again. Know. Yeah. Do it again. Oh. Oh yeah. So um, we will have a roll call to retire to executive session, please. Well, Carney. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Kessel. Aye. Okay, thank you. Um, when we return, it will we will not be voting on anything. It will simply be for the purpose of adjournment. So thank you everybody for your participation. So moved. Okay. Do we have a motion to return to open session? So moved. Second. <laughs> Roll call, please. Rooney. Aye. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Kulkarni. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Can I have a motion to adjourn, please? What? Move to adjourn. No, I'm sorry. Second. So <laughs> Stay there. I'm going to say no. Okay. Roll call, please. Okay. I'm sitting down. Batson. Aye. Benjamin. Aye. Carmichael. Aye. Drumkey. Aye. Hessel. Aye. Kulkarni. Aye. Rooney. Aye. Thank you. We are adjourned. Thank you. Aye.